What happened to the unpopular or bullied girl after high school? A girl in my year was bullied relentlessly for being odd. Unfortunately, she had a very unstable home life and her mother suffered from fairly severe mental health issues. They had a very explosive relationship. One day during class she just couldn't suppress her feelings anymore, so she took a pair of scissors out of her bag and proceeded to cut off all of her hair, right there at her desk. That was eight years ago. To this day, she still lives at home with her mother and does some sort of art course at the local college. Things don't always get better for people when high school ends, but I hope she is doing okay. That's very sad. Also, I have a question if anyone has an answer. Why exactly is cutting hair such a common response to emotional or stressful breakdowns? I feel like I hear about it a lot. Is there a defined psychological reason? In any case I hope things are, get better for her. Edit, so many good anwas. The most common response is that it gives a sense of control, which I think makes sense. The last I heard she was living on the streets. We've actually tried to track her down a few times over the years but she appears to have disappeared. I truly hope she is doing better now. She was a really sweet girl. Other assholes kids would bully her for her weight not realizing she came from an abusive foster home. Foster kids are disproportionately represented on my psych ward by a large margin. An incredibly underserved community that's invisible to most people. The amount of abuse, sexual or otherwise, is chilling. Many foster parents just like the government check. I want to have a couple kids the old fashioned way, but I'd love to be a foster parent too. I also meet a lot of wonderful ones with kids they can't control. Fetal drug exposure and genetic mental illness are much more common in this population, for obvious reasons. Good foster parents are fucking saints. I desperately want to become a foster parent, not because of the money but because my own personal health means I'll likely not ever have my own children. Unfortunately, I'm a single woman living in an apartment. Saving up for a house. But that's a few years off. I'm a foster dad. The state pays for child care, and the stipend they give you is more than a child costs. Summer camp, clothes, after school activities busing to and from school are all paid for. Healthcare too. I would like to suggest that you sign up and take the training before you decide it's not for you. It's the only truly important thing I have done in my life. I can't recommend it strongly enough. I'm in Canada so the system is a bit different but I'm also a foster parent. We aren't all bad. I try my best and it's been a challenging but rewarding journey. Definitely not a lifestyle for everyone can confirm this. My girlfriend came from an abusive home. Went to my state to live with her grandma. We met in school. I was the first person to be kind to her. I showed her around. Told her which teachers are nice and which ones are mean. Started dating. Sealed the deal at homecoming. Grandma put her in foster care. Luckily, the foster mother, is indeed a damned saint. Let me see her on Sundays, even though she wasn't supposed to and was really, really great. The meetings were somehow discovered by someone, and she was moved on nigh. She was supposed to come back the 8th, but number. The court date for her grandma is two days after our one year. Julia, if you're reading this, you're awesome. Please don't remove your foster license. The world needs more saints like you. Used to work psych, loved the work, hated the administration, and I can confirm about three of five kids were foster kids, and every other one had some really heavy baggage needing unloading. After starting I told my wife we weren't having any more because there's plenty of kids already who need a home and loving family and she didn't really understand until a few years later when one of her friends fostered a kid and she understood what makes it so hard for them, where they came from, how they bounce around from home to home how a lot of them end up in psychiatric care, and how a good number of the homes take them in for that government check and not because they actually want a child to raise not saying all but it is a lot. It's a broken system that creates broken people more often than not. It would be good to pull some kids out of it and give them a better chance. She married a lovely, caring man. She worked for a number of years as a computer programmer. They traveled the world, bought a house 
had a child who is now a wonderful young man. She now is a published author. I am so glad we became friends in junior high. She inspires me. This is the sweetest it makes me happy to read it. She was bullied because she always smelled awful, had dirty clothes and greasy hair, and every time head lice was spread at the school everyone would accuse her of being the culprit. She dropped out and got married, got pregnant, but got harassed online for being a teen mum. Then everyone found out that the reason she was always so dirty is because her mother was in prison for child abuse, she didn't know who her dad was and her aunt, who had sole custody made her sleep on the floor with 14 dogs and didn't let her shower. People felt really bad and tried to reach out but she told them all to fuck right off. She's really happy with her new family and looks like she's being the best mum. Got a job, supportive husband and a house of their own. It's sad she couldn't continue with her education because she was so incredibly smart. We went to a really prestigious school and she outperformed everyone, but ended up leaving without any qualifications. I was friends with her. All the other girls bullied her because she either wasn't feminine enough or was way too into anime. It didn't help she hung out with a bunch of nerdy dudes like me who played Magic, The Gathering and Warhammer every day, instead of hang out at the beach and hold wild benders on Fridays. She found herself the victim of racism by her fellow Asian students because she came from Vietnam, and was commonly insulted for it because she was really into Japanese culture not just anime, but the media, music, fashion, etc. She was super conscious about her teeth, because she came from a poor family, divorced, raised primarily by an alcoholic mother who would soon develop severe mental problems. I mean, I love her mother a lot, she's really sweet, but she didn't really act responsibly with her children, resulting in them having really screwed up teeth with no money to fix it. She landed herself a serious boyfriend near the end of high school, a guy a few years older than her. Seeing her home situation, he decided to be her savior and got her a job at the game store next to his job. He moved out to get a cheap studio apartment where they could just live a normal life, where they didn't have to put up with the drama and stress of their families. Turns out they got too cozy with one another, and she got pregnant. She had to quit her job and became a full-time mom, was actually really good at it. The guy made an attempt to raise this kid, but it turns out he couldn't see himself living the rest of his life with this girl or being a father, he still wanted a college education, a major career path, and a more solitary life. He cheated on her while she was pregnant, but she thought it was just something that happens and he'll be more loyal once the child was born, so she didn't murder him for it. Nope. The cheating only got worse, to the point that he ended up cheating on the girl he was cheating on her with. Yeah, he was quite a piece of work. He suddenly disappeared shortly after their daughter turned two. The overwhelming response wasn't one of anger, or fear, or apprehension. It was relief. Having him gone actually made her life more easy, and without him there, she got a lot of help and sympathy from her family. She moved back in with her mom, taking her daughter with her. Her brother moved back into the house too, for a little bit, just to help ensure the kid had food, supplies, and regular doctor visits. One of her old friends from high school reconnected. Turns out he was in a serious relationship with one of the girls who bullied her. The years were kind to their mentality and without the high school environment polluting their perceptions, they ended up all becoming good friends with one another. Through them, she found herself getting invited to gatherings by these women who previously antagonized her, and when they found out she had a kid with a deadbeat dad who disappeared and doesn't pay a dime in child support, they were more than enthusiastic to help however they could. Ten years later, she's found herself a new man, a good man and he was so enchanted by her that in a crazy lapse of impulsive judgment, put a ring on her hand without a second guess. They were going to move out, but opted to stay to care for mom as her mental state worsened. And her daughter is all grown up now. Blows my mind. She's now the same age as when I first met her mom. Looks just like her mom did at that age, a direct clone, 
and hasn't a damn bit of her father at all. Everyone my age is wrangling toddlers and attending Daniel Tiger themed birthday parties. Meanwhile, my friend's kid joins us for magic, the gathering, late night arcade ventures, anime screenings, quotes the IT crowd flawlessly, and hangs out with us like one of the group. And her kid is so grown up, she insists that her mom and daddy go have date nights, that she'll cook for grandma and watch the baseball game on TV with her. It's amazing. This kid loves her new daddy so much, she'll go out of her way to ensure he maintains a strong relationship with her mom. So quite a turnaround. Yeah, the person who tried saving her dumped a massive liability on her and left her for selfish reasons disappearing and refusing to pay child support. But in light of that, the people who bullied her ended up supporting her. And her liability grew up into a responsible girl whose existence allows her to have a strong relationship with her husband without a ton of worry for her own mother. Yeah, they're still struggling financially, but they're climbing. Last month, she just had her first dental appointment in 20 years. And she hated every minute of it. Sounds like a bit of long deserved normalcy to me. I'm fine, outwardly. Married to a wonderful man with two brilliant, beautiful children. Career I can work on in placeholder fashion while the kids are young but great potential for future developments. Internally I'm riddled with self-doubt anxiety and depression. Always trying to please people, surprised that people seem to like me and any time I see people talking in low tones to each other, my knee-jerk reaction is to think they're talking shit about me. I'm 37. Bullying leaves deep, deep scars. I have that reaction too when people talk without me being able to hear or understand. I don't think I was bullied much but did have some issues growing up. Help you get over yours. I was the unpopular girl, never really fit in, had a rep for being weird. But got good grades. Never really understood what made me weird, until college got difficult. Eventually went to get checked out because it seemed like my brain was always a bit off. Got diagnosed with autism, aged 21, and it explains a lot. It was just harder to see because of my gender. ASD is underdiagnosed in girls and because I was an overachiever at school, at the cost of having little ability to make friends and a lot of ability to alienate everyone in every school I'd been to. Girls, if you think something's up, get checked out. If I'd been diagnosed earlier, it might have helped people understand I wasn't just a batty old weirdo, and maybe, my schools would have helped me, heck, my parents might have understood me better and not just told me to get over it. It also just helps a lot, knowing it's not your fault. It's made me a happier person. Edit, I still have mental health issues stemming from inability to cope with social issues. A diagnosis isn't a cure-all, nor is it an excuse to do anything bad. It's just a means of understanding what's wrong, and leads to support and better management of conditions. I'm a girl and have had a strong feeling I have Asperger's or similar, for years now. I had an evaluation done, and they said I had no sign of it at all. But one of the reasons why, that they gave me, was because I didn't have any tics or hand flapping. I don't know, I was disappointed and honestly still feel I am somewhere on the spectrum.